And, you know, if you've got 20 people, let's say you're successful in your pre-talk and you do get 20 volunteers because the success of the show is how good your pre-talk is. And then they yeah. wonder why they got no volunteers and the induction sucks. Well, it's because the introduction wasn't good. But honestly, when you go out on stage, if you're lucky enough to get 20 volunteers, they're not all going to be compliant. They're not all going to get hypnotized. They're not all going to follow instructions. And when you ask someone to leave the stage, they're not always going to leave. So you've got these 20 people that potentially you have these big problems with, but you can't show the audience you're having a problem on stage. So there's a lot of considerations. So one of the secrets is for your first show, I would say just for your first show, maybe your first two, have somebody backstage. I, I remember I was training somebody uh, in, the, in the Caribbean, actually, and I was just at the side of the stage in case he crumbled and he didn't crumble. He killed it because I'm going <laughs> oh, you know, at the side of the stage. And sometimes you just need that little bit of moral support. You do a casting call and you say, hey, I'm looking for 20 people to come to this place on Saturday at one o'clock. I'm going to need you for minimum two hours. I'm going to pay you $10 an hour or 20 lay, uh, uh, what, you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to pay you 100 euros or whatever it might be. And I am, and you, don't, and you have to be careful with what you say. You say, I am rehearsing new routines for my stage hypnosis show. You may or may not get hypnotized. It does not matter. But I'm looking for willing volunteers that want to experience hypnosis if if a if a routine is is crashing and dying and it's just for whatever reason not working you have to like extinguish it in such a way that the audience don't know <laughs> that actually yeah. it's not working and this is another secret you don't want to after the show after the show you want to be shaking hands taking photographs like I always give a suggestion at the end of my show whether they want it or not at the end yeah. of the show you'll probably you know you'll want to and you have to <laughs> yeah, it's a fine line between arrogance and sort of suggestion but you say after the show when you want to get my autograph I will be over here next to the sales table on the sales table you're going to see all kinds of wonderful um items on that table that's going to help you for better sleep weight loss but i'm suggesting to them they need to come and get my autograph and they need to come and take a photograph with me so when you take my photograph and choose to have my autograph on one of the posters or the flyers after the show you'll also notice i'm selling products and you'll want to come to the back you know uh so i always like to do that but there's always somebody that you're selling something you can make two, three thousand dollars after a show just selling merchandise. That could be more than what you actually went there for in the first place. I'm a practicing hypnotist. By practice, it doesn't mean I have a clinical practice. It just means each day in every way I'm practicing hypnosis. Each day in every way I'm getting better at it. The two skills go hand in hand. I use my hypnotherapy uh, training and skills, and I also use my stage skills. And so when I'm dealing with a client one-on-one, -on -one, like I have one in a, right after we, we've finished speaking, I know that my skill set, I, I like to entertain them on the beginning of a hypnotherapy session. I give them a compelling and a fascinating and an interesting reason why when we do the change work, when we do the hypnosis session, they're gonna have a natural desire to succeed and win and be better today than they were yesterday. And I use my stage skills, I do magnetic fingers, I, I do a few things. I, I do a little bit of mentalism too. So especially with the online sessions, I have them think of numbers and I have them just, just I just engage their minds so they realize something is possible. Tell them a little bit about yourself and you, you just become a bit more personal without boring them. So it's a quick yeah. sort of, you, you know, you, you want to just connect with the audience as soon as you can. And then also if you're on a stage, you need to be able to learn stagecraft. And that involves how you walk, how you talk on stage, how you gain the eye contact of the people in the balcony or the people in the front row. Because normally people don't look at the front row because they're right there and they're not going to get it. So the more it looks like a show, the more they're going to get hypnotized. So the easier uh -huh. it is. If your environment does not look like a hypnosis show and it just looks like a couple of chairs at the side of a bar or restaurant, 
it's going to be harder for you, right? Because it's like, it's easier to hypnotize somebody in Vegas. Wasn't that absolutely fantastic? I'm sure that you found a lot of information in this very short video you just saw, maybe like four or five, six minutes, however long it was. But that is not all. You can have access to the entire presentation of this amazing speaker, plus 40 more other presentations and speakers. And you can have access for life. You can have access to the video recording, to the audio recording, to the swipe files, to the transcripts, to all of the bonuses and the special gifts that all of the speakers and presenters and also the organizers are offering in the premium pass package. So if you like this, if you want more, make sure to sign up below for the premium pass and have lifetime access to everything. I'm sure it'll be one of the best investments you've ever made in your life, in yourself, in your practice, in your health, and also with